talk about, you know, how, it, how it's good to talk about mental health and mental illness, but I was noticing that it's not really going that far. And I just wanted to find a way to create a space where people could go and be honest or see other people being honest and know that it's actually really common and the things that make them feel weird or like they're on their own are actually happening to other people as well. I've been collecting people's real life experiences through a survey that I set up and I've received their answers and then I've been building some music which is aimed at creating this surreal and sort of subconscious world so rather than mirroring their answers it's more just creating a world for people to step into. I'm making this for the Jerwood Arts and Cheltenham Jazz Fellowship. It's called Jerwood Jazz Encounters and this installation is going to be shown for the first time at Cheltenham Jazz Festival 2022. And I'm working with a visual artist called Rian Cook who's projecting the text from their answers onto fabric so it looks like it's floating. And I'm also working with a sound artist called Nikki Sheth and she's going to be spatializing the sound, moving it around the room. questions revolve around stigma, so the types of words and stereotypes that people hear in the media about mental illness. I also ask people if they've ever hidden mental illness from people around them and why. There is a question about how mental illness makes them see themselves and also I ask a question which is if you could visualise the inside of your mind what would it look like? That's part of the, um, the idea of bringing in and a playful element to the music came from that because people are saying like really creative things in their answer like clouds that are like on the floor or like just everything in like topsy-turvy worlds which I love um, and yeah people have given really like colourful answers so I really wanted to try and recreate that as well in the visuals and music. When the installation happens, it will operate as something that you can walk through, but there's also going to be three ticketed performances a day where I'll be performing live in the middle of the room. I've been using my saxophone, clarinet and my voice and recording it live and then playing it through different speakers and adding different delays. And I've also been recording the sounds of my instrument, so things like blowing into my saxophone without a mouthpiece on, also making use of the Steinway piano here, which is amazing. <laughs> and also taking field recordings of the sea while I'm here. And I've got a sampler with me as well. And I've been recording different noises um, back in Newcastle and loading them onto my sampler to bring here and then I can drop them into the tracks with woodwind and voice and manipulate them there. With something like this, which is people telling you really personal stories, feels like you've got a responsibility to kind of do them justice as well and I think there's been a lot of like soul searching of like making sure that I'm doing it for the right reasons and kind of the, the idea of not having the music replicating the answers was quite a big one for me like you're, at, you're still allowed to have fun with things even if it's a serious subject so I realised that for me I really wanted to create um, this surreal and fun to be in world with the music rather than it always be like a direct reflection of what people were saying because one of the main reasons I wanted to do this was to show that mental illness can be talked about in the same place as happy things and positive things it doesn't have to be this separate scary thing so I think that's one of the main things I've learned from it is that when you're in charge of a project like you can have as much fun as you want Thank you.